So today we've got the opportunity to go and check out the garage that actually builds the cars for the Fast and the Furious series and a bunch of other movies. And while we're here, we're getting to speak to Dennis McCarthy, the guy that's in control of choosing what cars are going in the videos and essentially like masterminds the builds of these cars. So we'll have a quick look around the garage and then shortly we'll go talk to him and then ask him about some of the cars that feature in the movie. And I can spy over there, there's the, the Ice Charger. Um, and we're going to speak to him specifically about that vehicle. It's one of the, the coolest ones here. They made, I think, seven of them for the movie. So this one here is one of the stunt ones. It has uh, exploding bullet things that come out of the, the hood and stuff. So we'll have a quick look at that. After we've had a look at some of these cars that you can notice the, from the original um, one, two, three uh, movies. And uh, all right, let's get to it. So what is like done to this power wise and drivetrain wise and everything like that? So this is basically a 500 horsepower crate motor hooked to a, a triple 400 transmission uh, going through a company named General Dry Shed that builds all of our drive lines to a uh, Mosier nine inch center section, uh, Curry housing, 35 spline axles, Detroit locker, Atlas transfer case, uh, Sparco seat, uh, automated race pack dash, um, you know, if you come to under the hood of the car, this is our, uh, what's called our, our bullet car. So you have all the explosive that are, that are wired in to uh, be uh, deployed at, uh, you know, the, the command of special effects. And you've you pushed the engine all the way back to weight distribution? We basically, it wasn't even so much for weight distribution. We had to push the motor all the way back the to give drive. us clearance for the front differential. So gotcha. you can see we barely have it. It's all... So is that another nine inch or something? Like this that. is exactly true. There's another a nine inch front center section. This is a Curry housing. Uh, a company called LSK uh, built the uh, design the front subframe. Uh, the front seat axles were kind of a group effort. Um, the outer spindles are basically a three-quarter ton Chevy truck. And uh, the steering rack is a How, one of their fastest ratio steering racks. Brake system is Willwood. Um, and like I said, you can see it's all uh, packaged very tight. Oh, the Fox, uh, Fox fully adjustable coilover shocks, um, which like I said, out there in the ice, it was you know, anything but flat, so it was uh, yeah. a lot of suspension tuning and everything else to make it, you know, handle the way we wanted it to and stay on the ground as it, as it should. So the tires that are on this at the moment aren't the ones that were on there out in the they're ice? The, they're the exact same tires, we just, uh, these ones just don't have the studs. Okay. Is there, so this is a tube frame chassis, is there anything original from a, the actual donor car? Like Just that very top top section of firewall yeah. is original, the roof's original, Yeah. that cowl plate is original, the panel between the back window and the uh, deck lid is original uh, and that's it you know everything else you can see from the front clip forward everything is our own front fenders our own chassis um, you know the car basically is set up right now with uh, no front sway bar we put a huge rear sway bar in the car just to give it the uh, oversteer uh, you know characteristics that we want to see in a movie um, and like I say which is pretty rare to have no front bar in it but it was just like I said we took the car out and that's that's how I like to be so yeah um, so yeah, overall, it's just uh, like I said, this thing's used, it's abused. It's like I said, it's been across the uh, been across the ocean uh, from New York to Iceland twice. So uh, you can see that it's kind of taken its toll on the uh, on its good looks, but uh, you know, it still works, still runs, still does everything it could do uh, mechanically that it did. You know, so they're not really even pushed it. that hard. The, the engine could take a hell of a lot more, I suppose. It's kind oh, of oh no, they push it all the way, man. They are. Oh, I mean, if they didn't have a rev they would they'd all explode uh -huh. for sure. Yeah. No, when you're out there, man, they are literally. You know, through the gears on the rev limiter, yeah. every shift, every shift, every shift. It's a pop, 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 which is cool because <laughs> it gives you that that flame effect constantly because yeah. they're always on the rev limiter. Yeah. But no, man, they hammer them beyond all belief. I yeah, that's what I mean. Like the the engine probably is, it, it could probably take it's, a lot. It's more hard to kill the motor. Yeah. It's just you know the way these motors are set up. You know, there, there's a lot of fail safes with fuel mixture with it running lean. Um, obviously, with the rev limiter, which is you know a key ingredient to keeping the thing alive. Um, we have oil pressure safeties. We have uh, coolant. Over, overheating safeties that'll you know instantly alert the driver yeah. we eliminated the uh, you know you could basically set this thing up where it would shut the car down but what happens is you can never shut a car down at the wrong moment so we eliminate the shutdown feature uh -huh. of low oil pressure or you know high temperature but we retain the the flashing strobe LED yeah. light right in his face to yeah. hey something's wrong so 
it does make it fairly hard to hurt. The transmissions are built by a good friend of mine, John Kilgore. These transmissions are the same transmissions he would build for a, uh, you know, for a Baja trophy truck. The uh, Atlas transfer case is something you would see like in a King of the Hammers, you know, uh, you know, Ultra 4 Rock Race Jeep. Uh, you know, the 9-inch rear end is something that would be commonly found in a NASCAR. Uh, axles are 35 spline, which is huge for a, you know, standard, you know, for a standard vehicle. Uh, all the control arms are custom fabricated. The front subframe is grafted into a full tube chassis that goes all the way to the back car, so the car is solid from the very front to the very back bumper. Because, um, like I said, obviously they take a lot of abuse, they run into a lot of things, and kind of just part of the part of the Fast and <laughs> Furious deal. Nice. So this was probably one of your favorite ones to build for this. Yeah, it was. Yeah, these yeah. things were just. It was just neat to build the. You know, I mean, obviously everybody loves the uh, the Ken Block uh, the video. You know, yeah. and I mean, it's kind of obviously this car kind of take took on that look, not so much intentionally, but just really by. Uh, by necessity, just as like I said, to package everything under there, you have to widen the track width. Yeah. But uh, it, it definitely has that same type of a feel. And like I said, uh, I've used that uh, Ken Block video numerous times with his Mustang, just as a pitch, you know, in a meeting. <laughs> we need to do this, you, you know? Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, oh. I, I definitely owe him some thanks for that. And, uh, you know, like I said, this car is, I think it's just gritty, mean, angry, you yeah. know, it just kind of fits, uh, Kind of fits where where Dom's coming from in uh, the third act of the film. Does it have any mufflers at all? Because it's not even as loud as I was expecting. For it looks straight. It really pipe. doesn't. I mean, it's kind of a double wall pipe in the you know mm -hmm. uh, tip there on the end, so it does somewhat muffle. But no, it's really not okay. muffled at all. We've also uh, used heat wrap all the way under the car up through the back, which yeah. does help quiet the car down, and uh, you know keeps anything from catching on fire. Nice.